All right, we're back. It's no apologies on Beck, your after hours oasis of sanity. I'm your host, Rick Becker. Co-host Lori Hintz over there, special guest Margaret City in the blue. <laughs> so uh, talk a little bit about your time in the House and the Senate, um, some of the things that you're most proud of, first of all. Well, I, I really always tried to look at things from an objective point of view. I always I, I remember the committee clerk saying, you always look at it from the point of the little people. She, she, and, uh, she said, that's a phrase that you use quite a bit. And I guess that means that I was trying to look out for the common citizen. Mm -hmm. How is this bill going to affect the you know, mom and dad out there struggling to raise a family, as we had all exactly. struggled to raise a family? And so, um, yeah, that's that. I always that's thought that you were probably one of the best researchers that I had. And I had heard that from other people, that other people had said that too, that you were a gifted researcher. You would go to every link to possibly find information for background on a, on a subject. I really did. I mm -hmm. spent a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then you were also, you, you alluded to the fact that you were a teacher also. Yes, I was. I was a high school English teacher. And so I really enjoy young people mm -hmm. and I enjoyed, you know, helping people, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, uh -huh. it was a, being in the legislature is a wonderful gift. And I think that we, you know, we started this whole segment or the last segment talking about elected officials and right. how important it is that we really know what people stand for. And it's so easy to couch what you stand for in, you know, in platitudes. generalities. <laughs> yeah, platitudes. Mm -hmm. And so it's, but it's so important that we have someone that we can go back to that it's accountable. Because, mm -hmm. you know, in our American Revolution, we thought that we would have no taxation without representation. And so for every dollar that's spent, we need to know who's accountable for that. And Rick is so good at always doing that. <laughs> well, it's, uh, that's what we're elected for. And that's, you know, but you bring up the, uh, a point that um, it, as far as what your principles are, to, that, to, to stand by them. But I think for a lot of people, they're, they're good people that want to help. They're well-intentioned, but they haven't necessarily thought through what their principles are. Okay. And so it's hard, it's hard to stand by them when you don't know. And so I, I'm, I'm trying not to be sound like I'm be, being condescending or critical, but it's it's so important. Um, you know, you were in there with some very strong principles, and if you have the strong principles, then you know when to say yes or no, vote yes or no. You don't yes. need to look to the lobbyists, and you don't need to look to the agency heads and all of that. And that's what we that what we need are people that are prepared to go in and understand what the principles are number one and then stand by them that's true and you know one of my number one principles was the principle of subsidiarity that government functions best at the local level closest to the people and the higher up the ranks you go so the more that social services goes from the county level to a district level to a statewide level the farther away you are from the people mm -hmm. And the, and the less good you're actually doing. I remember we spent three days one time. Um, there were, I think, 15 legislators, 15 people from Standing Rock, and 15 state employees. And we got together to discuss the plight of Native American children zero to three on reservations. Mm -hmm. And we found out in that three days that there were 45 programs. Later, we heard there were 75 programs <sighs> aimed at children zero to three on reservations and they were duplicative and they were each a separate federal funding stream mm. coming down to the capital and a little bit of money trickling out to the tribe mm -hmm. that wasn't really doing much good so we have all these people feeding at the trough and very mo very little money really accomplishing what we needed to do and so all of us republicans democrats at the end of that three days said tear down these walls tear down these funding silos and block grant the money to the tribes and let's really start to do some good for these kids right yep that's very thoughtful very thoughtful i like that what are uh, what are some other issues you see because i know that you you stay current what are some issues that you're looking at that are concerning there's there's a lot but what 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 hits you well, I think we always have to be aware about of those who are trying to emancipate minors. I, as a former high school English teacher, I know that the brain is not fully um, psychologically, emotionally, you know, or, and neither is the child fully formed at age 18. And so to lower that and to let them have um, more freedoms at 16 and even 14, I think is really getting dangerous. Um, they need that parental guidance. 
Right. Yeah, when you say freedoms, you're referring to freedoms that are permitted without parental exactly. consent. Exactly. Right. You know, well, I agree. I mean, there should be practically nothing <laughs> right. with, without parental consent because the, 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 the nuclear family is the first basis of, uh, you know, uh, the, the smallest government is the family. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, and for the government to go in and say, no, parent, you can't decide. The, the kid gets to decide. That's crazy. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, during the break that there's something Bismarck is looking at for lowering the age of consent for getting tat uh, not tattoos, piercing. uh, piercings. Yeah, they, I just saw it on the news last week, and I thought, you know, whenever I hear that, my alarm bells go off, and I just think, you know, there's just no reason to allow a 14-year-old to consider doing that without having a parent involved. It's just, it's just a practical matter. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with 14-year-olds getting piercing as long as their parents gave them permission. Right. And they're aware. Right. Well, <laughs> and what's the government going to do? Say, no, they can have piercings. We're allowing them to get the piercing itself. Mm -hmm. But then the parent says, you don't live in this household with piercings. Then what does the government do? Are you going you're to step in and say, no, you have to let them live at your house? It's just a ridiculous notion that government should not be involved in these family decisions. Right. Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. I and was, there's so many oversteps, though. There's so many bureaucratic levels and, and people who are not. And we, what, what do we do about that? I mean, what, what can you really do about these, these you know, the military industrial complex, the, the, you know, all of these, these bureaucrats within even city and county governments? You know, one of the most important things is to always oppose term limits because we need, I know, <laughs> we need people with institutional memory. Um, otherwise, the people who work at the Capitol, who stay there for 40 years, have all the institutional memory. And you need people who have been around the block, who have seen it for a number of years. I think of Senator Dwayne Much, who was there for 48 years, I believe, who could tell you in detail about <laughs> any bill and how many times it had come up. Because these bills cycle through every sure. 10 years or every 20 years. Well, that's and interesting. So that is counterintuitive. I would not have ex expected that. I would think that you would want new ideas and new fresh, fresh uh, information. In. There is so much new, uh, um, there are so many new people that come in as a matter of course anyway. Mm -hmm. There are retirements, there are people that just, they get defeated and so, there, there, I think it's probably one third new almost every time, one fourth to one third. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Well, that's a good attrition. I mean, that's yeah. that's uh -huh. that's good. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. Well, I am so grateful that you came in here and gave us a little little talk on bureaucracy versus elected today. And I, I want you to know how much I admire and respect you for all of your work in the legislature. I'm so grateful.